Hey James, your seventh training camp. How does this one feel compared to the other as far as where you are physically? It feels great. Uh, obviously, we know that uh, it's a process and we got to get better every single day. Uh, and it's just the beginning. Uh, but so excited to be with this team. Bunch of great guys, bunch of great teammates, and uh, excellent coaches. James, where do you feel you're at right now mentally? Because I know you want the offense to be second nature, where you're actually not only trying to run plays, but know what the defense is doing, how you're going to attack that defense. Because before you know it, the season's here. And, and, uh, and, you know, Sean, you know, everyone's saying, well, do, do you know the offense like Sean or Drew Brees? And that's, that's a lot of years. So where do you think you're at right now? Yeah, uh, you know, continuity is always a great thing uh, for any position. And uh, being able to experience Sean's and Drew's relationship uh, gave me a good grasp of the system. But obviously reps is what's important. Uh, this year, you know, I probably got more reps in three days than I, than I got all last year. So uh, it's, it's an incredible feeling to be able to have the opportunity to go out there and execute because I'm more of a, you know, uh, a visual learner. I, I like to apply what we're doing, apply to certain concepts, and I learn better that way. So it, it's been fun, and I, and I think I'm, I'm getting a good grasp of it. Uh, but, but obviously... My objective is to get better every single day, and I and I know with a great head coach, uh, his resume speaks for itself. And we got great guys in that in that quarterback room, that, and we're helping each other, and uh, we're building. Jameis, how much uh, more confidence do you have to be aggressive as a passer when you're gunning for a starting role as a quarterback compared to last year when you fill in for Drew? I feel like sometimes. And I don't want to assume anything, but maybe you, you want to manage the game a little bit more and not turn it over, especially when you come in like in the middle of a game after Drew goes out. Does that make sense? Like, do you, Are you able to be more aggressive when you're gunning for a starting role and kind of cut it loose a little bit more? I think it depends on the situation, right? Uh, I think our defense does a great job of mixing up coverages, especially right now. I mean, they probably have three installs in. Uh, so we have a great in, in, uh, a defense that makes you check the ball down, right? But when those opportunities are there to get big plays, uh, you want to execute them. Uh, we did that pretty well today. Uh, I know Taysom had a nice back shoulder uh, to Marquez Callaway in a, in a spear. So once you get when you get those opportunities, you want to execute on those. But but my main goal in, is again is to to really uh, perfect this offense and whatever they need me to do, I'm able to do it. You, you mentioned the amount of reps you're getting now. I, do, you, do you feel the the what you've learned? Are you able to apply everything? And does it feel any different? Do you feel like you've made growth since last year, just being being around here? Yes, uh, I feel like I'm getting better every single day. Um, but one thing that helps, I'm, I'm telling you, when you when you're able to watch uh, greatness run it, you 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 build a mentality that you just like I, I can go and watch cutters of him do it, right? So I'm just trying to replicate what he does, right? And then I get a grasp of different concepts that I like more than what he may like. Uh, and you did you kind of pick and choose, like definitely when I'm playing, when I'm sitting there watching film, things that I I, I, I may be more uh, things that I, I may like more than him. But uh, in, in terms of the offense, I feel like I'm, I'm grasping it well, uh, and I'm executing pretty, pretty good. Trey Clark Smith, uh, the first day, said, how, you know, talking about you guys working out, and it wasn't just on the field stuff. I mean, you guys, were, uh, you know, it's just a couple of y'all, so you've got to know each other real well. I mean, how important was that, this on-field rapport and off-field, just to kind of get to know the people even more that you could be playing with? Uh, man, when, like I say, continuity. Like the more times I can see him getting in and out of a break, the better for us, right? We want to be on the same page. He's one of our elite receivers, and uh, we have to be on the same page together. Uh, so it was definitely a privilege to get to work with one of my main guys, you know, uh, down in down in Tampa, and, and it was fun. And you you seen how it, how it translate out here on the field, man. Him, we, that probably was our first incompletion today on the freaking slip. Uh, and uh, we, we'll, we'll take the incompletion of the day. We, we know that, I mean, sometimes it happens, right? What about just the importance of being able to spend time together? I mean, because you could work and then, you know, you're also doing rough meetings and such, but just kind of that one-on-one, -on -one, two-on-one, you know. Just well, well I often say the teamwork makes the dream work, right? So the more I, I just get to know who that guy is, he gets to know who I am. You know, you, you kind of build that trust, right? So you, you, it's, it's one of those situations where you, you look that guy in the eye and he's like, yeah, I know what page you're on, you know, and I know what page he's on. So uh, anytime you can build that team camaraderie with anyone, you know, the offensive line, you know, that's why, uh, you know, Sean, you know, promotes uh, gatherings. But, you know, with COVID and all, we couldn't do that, right? We could, so we kind of lost that aspect of that team building. So the only time we get to spend time together is in this locker room, so we definitely got to take advantage of that. But uh, this offseason, being able to spend time with Deontay, Lil Jordan, um, TQ, 
and Adam Troutman and Jawan and, and, and Nick and all those guys, like you just you just know, like when we get on the field, like hey, we've been here before, right? We already executed these plays, so uh, it's a different type of connection. James, James I know you said earlier in this offseason that one of the main things you learned from Drew was the you know the decision making and taking what's there sometimes instead of trying to make it. Is it a coincidence that in the first couple of practices we saw a lot of quick slants and checkdowns, or is that you're going against well, a lot of well, the well, the, it, it wasn't decision making. Is is like. We, we're making money off of decisions, not results. So we're not result oriented. Uh, that's the big thing. Uh, and, and as long as you're getting completions, we're doing good, right? We have a great defense. We have a great offensive line. Like defense, they get tired when they see completions, right? Uh, they, they want you to check it down, check it down, check it down. But I think that's what Drew would have perfected over the last three years of his career of just lulling defenses and sleeping and boom, 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 over their head. And uh, there you go, a touchdown. Could you share it with us uh, after the Tampa playoff game? Would, would Drew share it with you? The fans, I know, like, did he? It was almost like a passing of the torch, or can you share what was what he told you? No, he, you know, he just was motivating me, man. Like, I'm gonna keep that between me, okay. me and Drew. You know, like I said, I, I seen that guy battle through all the things he had to go through last year. So just for him to be able to be aware, be present, to share something with me, and that was probably his last game. You know, uh, that was a privilege and an honor. You know, so I'm, I'm going to keep that between us. Um, uh, I, I think he'll respect that. Have James, you all stayed in touch since then? Have you and Drew stayed in touch since yeah. then? Yeah. Is, that, is that check down mentality? Is that a significant change for you at all? <laughs> no, it isn't. No. It is not no check down mentality. Well, not mentality, it's, but, it's, but it's not the course of the Listen, it's, there, listen, it's, it, it's <laughs> take what they give you, right? And, and, I, and I think uh, that's one thing our, our coaches preach, you know, we, we want to, like on my, on my resume, I said, you know, elite progressions, like we want to do that. Me, Taysom, all the quarterbacks, we want to be elite in our progressions, right? Uh, typically, you know, offense always says, you know, someone is always open, right? So we want to be able to move through those progressions quickly and be able to get the ball completed. James, how did you guys take the uh, Mike Thomas news? Oh, man, I, I was devastated. Like he's one of the best receivers in the game, right? But the thing about Mike Thomas, you know he's working his tail off to get back with us, right? So it's not like we, we have a guy that's not going to be working. This guy is, is one of the most dominant receivers over the past five years. This guy has a tremendous work ethic. This guy wants to be here. So I guarantee you Mike Thomas is working his tail off right now to get back with us, and that's what we're going to be able to cherish. Uh, we're going to remember this year from Mike Thomas, right? All great players go through adversity. You know, I had some adversity where I had to sit the bench all of last year. Right, so all great players go through adversity. Mike Thomas is going to be bounce back stronger than ever, stronger than ever, and that's what this culture is with the Saints organization. Like before I even got here, you know, the past four years, this team has been winning. This team has been together. So uh, we're going to embrace our teammates, and we're going to love on our teammates, and we're going to have their back until they get back. The dynamic hey, of that relationship. I mean, it, were people upset with them or anything like that, or was no? We we we're, we're uplifting him. We're encouraging our teammates here. That's what we do. We got his back. I got his back, 100%. It's early, but uh, early impressions of Ian Book in the meeting room and they're smiling. So. Yeah, I, I love Ian. Uh, he has to be more prepared, especially on his rookie performances. Uh, he can't get called out in the team meeting and not be able to prepare. Like He, he has to be ready to sing his song. But no, nah, all jokes aside, uh, Ian has been doing really good. He's been very receptive. I think that I love our quarterback room, even with Trevor taste all of us have great relationships man we're all building to help each other out because the thing is about this team right as quarterbacks we have to put the team in front of all of us not we all have our individual goals right we all have our individual accomplishment that we want to accomplish on the field but collectively we want to be able to make the team go and uh, i think we're together and i think we're all doing that james uh, you kind of referenced sitting on the bench last year and it's tough hey. I know you, you, you know what was going to happen. You know you were going to be competing for a starting job, but when you got that first practice in, you know that you're, you're out there doing it. Like, did you reflect on that first? Yeah, it's, it's always a opp great opportunity to be have a chance to be one in 32, right? And like I said, man, we got great coaches. I have a great team, man. I, I'm, so, I'm so blessed to be a part of this team uh, more than anything else, you know. Um, and, I, and, I, and you, you can't put a price on having an opportunity to be the NFL quarterback. I mean, I, like I, I think that's one of the most desired positions in all the sports is to be a quarterback. And, uh, and, and I have a great chance to be that. Jameis, you mentioned that um, play Again. where Trayvon Smith uh, slipped. Can you go through the next play um, from your eyes, the like, deep pass to Deontay? Was that just good coverage on that play? Well, 
obviously I want that play back. I, I, um, but I mean, that's that's the thing. You know, it's next play mentality, right? Uh, incompletions. We're gonna live with incompletions. But again, with the connections, the more and more we we rep that, uh, the later on in camp you're gonna see us connecting uh, on that. The more and more we have, you know, uh, reps where where we feel the cornerback trying to send inside. The more and more I can communicate to Deontay on film, watching the film, like, hey, run it like this. Hey, how do you want that ball? Do you want me to drive that ball a little bit more? Hey, do you want me to lay that ball out a little bit more? Uh, and and I, I think that's what leads to execution, right? That's the most important thing. You can run the play over and over and over again. But the execution may lead you to another uh, place in the progression. So I, I, I know uh, me and Deontay worked that ball a lot this offseason, uh, not against uh, a defensive player like, like Crawley. So uh, we're going to continue to get better at that, and we're going to start executing on that. You usually yeah. like, only have time to like write down whether it's like completion or incompletion, so it's just <laughs> always helpful to like, hear y'all's perspective of what actually oh, happened. Yeah. So we can tell oh, yeah. Things. Listen, incompletions are not a bad thing, but we, we want the ball in our playmakers' hands. Do you have any, I was uh, talking to Pete Carmichael yesterday. He was talking about how much you guys really sort of poured over almost every throw you had made in your career. What were you thinking there? Was that something that took place last year or even this off season? And, and had you done a deep dive like that, really? You know, every year um, I get a chance to do a, a self-scout uh, of myself. But, I mean, this year, I mean, I, I have so, so many people to, to self-scout. I mean, we had Tom Brady playing an offense that uh, I played in the year before. We had Matt Ryan playing an offense. Uh, with Dirk Cutter in Atlanta, and we had Drew Brees playing in this offense. We had three great quarterbacks playing in this division, right, in an offense that I know. And we had Teddy playing in, uh, in Sean's offense in Carolina. So, Seth Scott was kind of a little bit a little bit easier because in our conference, while we were watching against defenses in our conference, uh, I was able to watch each concept against different defenses. And I was able to watch, you know, four great quarterbacks execute in those systems. So uh, I, was, I was able to take some things from them. I was able to take some things that I learned from my experience in those offenses. And obviously this newer offense with, with Sean, uh, I'm able to, to, to see different concepts and stuff that I enjoy here. Uh, so uh, it, it was an amazing year for me uh, in terms of just growth of learning football overall because I had so many pieces in place to be able to take things from. When did y'all do that? And I guess how long did it take? <laughs> that's a that's a whole off season thing, and actually during the season, right? Uh, I, I was able to communicate with, with with some of the guys about just like, hey, like this is what he's thinking, like Tom and and and, and Matt. This is what they're thinking because I've been in those offenses, and uh, and as I watched them, right, I I, I peaked them every single week. I peaked the Bucks, I peaked, peaked Atlanta, uh, and sometimes of uh, of Carolina. Not much of Carolina because we run the same offense, but I definitely was peaking Atlanta and Tampa Bay every week uh, conceptually on their offense. Uh, just because I've been in those offenses. Do you have uh, any early impressions of uh, 17, Jalen Obuski? Uh, I think he can fly. Uh, I think my cousin Esau Winston is a great player. Uh, <laughs> a great uh, target. Um, we, like I said, as I, I drop as a quarterback, just get them the ball. I, I, I think everyone is doing a, a great job right now. With um, Harris, Deontay, you know, obviously he was a Pro Bowl turn man. Special teams been his primary responsibility early in his career. Are there, just watching your connection with him, do you outline why he might have a more prominent role as a receiver in the offense? Well, well I just think because he's, a, he's an excellent football player. Uh, a lot of guys might be specialists. Uh, a lot of guys might be just deemed as a receiver or a running back. But I think the thing that our organization does is we recruit where we, we get great football players. Uh, you know, I know y'all heard that, uh, that term, you know, the more you can do, right? Obviously, he's trying to elevate himself. Uh, higher, uh, and I, I definitely think he's capable to do anything he puts his mind to. Uh, so uh, you know, obviously, uh, he's made some plays for us in the passing game as well. You know, I remember uh, Minnesota when Taysom hit him for that big post, right? Like, so uh, he's his, his role is definitely going to expand just because he's so so talented and uh, he's an elite football player. It seemed like there are some plays where you were looking for him, especially that first practice where what did he kind of pause and then go and. Get him for that touchdown. I know you're talking I'm, about that. After yeah, that. yeah. Anytime, he, anytime he's on the field, like, like I said, I'm going through my progressions, and he, if he's open, I'm gonna give him the rock. You know, if he's not, I'm gonna find AK or, or, or uh, Tay underneath or someone underneath to get the ball to him. It's completions. It's about completions. You didn't have trouble finding AK in number six today, did you? <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I know, I know AK ain't gonna be wearing number six. Man. <laughs> but shout out to Timo, man. That was a great number six in this in this organization for a long time. We definitely. 
uh, miss him. Uh, I know he's doing a great job. He actually retweeted something about him wearing number six. And he was like, what a great choice. <laughs> well, well, I bet, I bet. AK is the only person that he probably will let wear six, but AK don't want to break that check on, on, on wearing number six, I guarantee you. All right, thank you guys. Hey, nice to meet you guys. All right, nice to put a face to the voices. Right. Look forward to seeing y'all later. All right. Thank you.